Hey there. In this video, I wanted to talk to you about the fifth normal form. Now, the fifth normal form in the formal language of normalization is complicated to talk about. However, if we frame our conversation about the fifth normal form in less formal language and with reference to what we've already learned in doing entity relationship modeling and the relational model, uh, the fifth normal form is pretty straightforward to understand and it's kind of interesting. Um, so let's talk about what's going on with the fifth normal form. First of all, the circumstances under which fifth normal form can be of interest or is relevant. Interesting thing about fifth normal form, it is a normalization where um, a bare key can be uh, a potential candidate for or um, in violation of this particular normalization. So we don't need any non-key elements to still have to worry about fifth normal form. What we do need to have, however, is a composite primary key or key, and we need to have at least a three-part primary key. So we have an example here where we are dealing with, and this is a fairly typical example in the course to date, particularly when we're talking about ternary relationships and more about that in just a moment. We have a supplier, we have a part, a set of parts that the suppliers provide, and we have a set of customers whom the suppliers serve. So this is a relationship capturing unique supplier numbers, part numbers, and customer numbers. And so with this circumstance, we need to ask ourselves, is this particular relation in fifth normal form? Before we do that, though, let's link this to entity relationship diagramming and our ternary relationship. OK, so here's the situation from an ER di diagramming perspective. We have suppliers uh, identified by uh, supplier numbers, customers identified by cust number, and part identified by part number. And a given supplier can supply a given part in terms of cardinality to either one or multiple customers. And let's say that would be multiple customers. A given part provided to or used by a given customer can be supplied by either at most one or multiple, we'll say multiple here, suppliers. And finally, a given supplier supplying a given customer. They can either supply multiple parts or at most one part and we will say multiple here. Now the cardinality is not super important for relating this back to fifth normal form. But what is, is the fact that we are dealing with pairwise comparisons when we're thinking about these constraints. We're saying a given supplier supplying a given part. So the supplier Acme steering wheel company, for sake of argument, providing steering wheel uh, 72X, do they provide that steering wheel to both the Ford Motor Company and GM and et cetera? Or do they only provide that steering wheel to one of their customers? That's the perspective for cardinality. And that's the perspective that we'll ask ourselves here in terms of fifth normal form. OK. So what I now want to bring your attention to is how this new diagram with exclusively binary relationships between the three entities in question differs from the diagram above that we just discussed. So here we know a given supplier can supply to customers. So suppliers supply customers, suppliers sell parts, and customers use parts. It looks exactly the same as the ternary relationship represented above, but it's not necessarily. And whether or, or not it means it's tantamount to the same thing is closely related to whether or not this relationship, this relation is in fifth normal form or not. So what's a potential difference between this all binary relationship and the ternary relationship above? Well, 
Imagine a given supplier. Again, we will use Acme Steering Wheel Company. Acme Steering Wheel Company supplies Ford Motor Company. Acme Steering Wheel Company sells Steering Wheel 72X. Steering Wheel 72X is used by Ford Motor Company. Okay, so let's look at those facts and we'll abbreviate here. So Acme supplies Ford. Acme sells 72X. Ford uses 72X. So we know Acme sells to Ford. We know Acme sells the 72X. We know Ford uses the 72X, but it's possible that Ford gets the 72X from a competitor to Acme and Acme sells the 72X to GM. And so we don't necessarily know if all three of these things are coming together simultaneously or not. In this diagram, we do because we have a record of it. We know specifically whether those three things are united simultaneously or not. Here, we are left to speculate. Okay? Or are we? If there is a business rule that makes these three things, these three type of facts, necessarily imply that Acme sells to Ford the 72X. If, if these three things, therefore, we necessarily and inescapably are certain that Acme sells to Ford the 72X, that's the case, then this relation here is not in 5NF. However, if these three things don't necessarily lead of inescapable course to Acme selling to Ford the 72X, then this relationship is, or this relation rather, is in fifth normal form and looks just fine. So that is the essential distinction. We know A to B, B to C, A to C, do we necessarily know that that means A, B, C at the same time? If that goes without saying, then we do not need to keep this relation as it is with its three-part key. We must, according to, three, to fifth normal form, break it down into supplier number, comma, customer number in one relation, supplier number, and part number in a second relation. And finally, customer number, part number in a third relation. Okay, so if we have, if we have this situation, then we must have this. If we do not have this as a matter of inescapable course, then we must stick with this. And this does not, in fact, violate fifth normal form. Because we can represent this through an additional business rule that's really not representable as a constraint in an entity relationship diagram, then we can get away with modeling it in the binary fashion here and also in using a set of relational schema that would result from the binary modeling. So this is interesting in that while you know we've already engaged in this question through our ER modeling, it is a constraint that is not representable in the grammar of ER modeling. However, we can engage this question 
from either the fairly laborious and formal language of normalization, or we can do it with a conversation that we've already had in the slight variant using the ER modeling, ternary modeling, and the binary equivalents thereof. So, in summary, if you have a relation that has a composite key that consists of three or more attributes, you need to contemplate the prospect of violating fifth normal form. And you need to consider it whether or not there's any non-key attributes. It doesn't matter. This is strictly a key-only naked key proposition, potentially. If there are other non-key attributes, it doesn't change the situation, but it's interesting to note that it doesn't matter that there's no non-key attributes here. So what you need to ask yourself in the simplest case, the ternary relationship case, if we have pairwise the situation where a given supplier supplies a customer and that customer uses a part that is in turn supplied by that supplier, does that necessarily mean that that supplier supplies that customer with that part? If that necessarily is the case, then this relation is not in third normal form and needs to be broken down to these three relations. If that does not necessarily follow, and I would hold in practice as often as not, it does not necessarily follow, then stick with the ternary relationship and stick with the relation that is um, the, the original example here, the three-part key, because there is no basis to reconstruct this fact from these three projections of that fact, and as such, you need to stick with specific accounting of the instance of these three things coming together, which I think is probably, as I mentioned, the more common case. In any case, I hope that that is for uh, somebody out there a more useful and accessible introduction to the fifth normal form. I'll be the first to admit, not remotely rigorous or technical, and I'll even go so far as to admit I, I couldn't lead you through a rigorous technical um, representation of the fifth normal form, um, mostly because I don't think, as you know, this is my, my, one of my big biases, I think that as a practical matter, entity relationship modeling is more valuable. It gets you to the same places and it provides you a um, life cycle methodology that is useful and consistent with um, recommendable practice where normalization, uh, not so much. So there you have it for what it's worth. Uh, study hard, and I will see you online.